Hi friends, this is Santanam from Smart Leaders IS. In this video, we will be looking at the editorials which came on the 27th of February. The article that we are going to look at today is titled Stemming the Tide of Agrarian Distress. This article says that instead of simply increasing the budget outlay for farmers, they actually need plans which will rescue them from crop failure. The author identifies three challenges with regards to addressing the agrarian distress. The first challenge is with regards to the minimum support price. The budget says that it is going to raise the MSP by at least 50% above the cost of production, which is a welcome step. However, the issue here is with regards to the calculation of the cost of production. The Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices, CACP, is responsible for the calculation of minimum support prices and it uses three different methods to calculate minimum support prices. The first is A2 which includes all paid out expenses including the cash in kind which will include the prices of the seeds, the fertilizers and everything. And then there is A2 plus FL which is actual paid cost and unpaid family labor. FL here is family labor. And then there is a C2 which is all actual expenses in cash and kind incurred in production and rent paid for leased land imputed value of family labor plus interest paid. So this is all inclusive. So far the government has been calculating the MSP only based on this value, this methodology which is A2 plus FL. The farmers are demanding it to be calculated based on the C2 methodology because obviously the C2 methodology of calculation will yield better MSP than the A2 plus FL methodology of calculating the cost of production. The second challenge the author notes is that development of agricultural markets, Grameen agricultural markets. This is not easy to implement because especially with small holders present in uh, far flung areas in the remotest corners of the country, they often get exploited because they are able to sell their products only to government run primary agriculture credit societies uh, or village traders at MSP or at lower prices. They are not able to realize the actual market price or get a better share of the uh, price paid by the end consumer. Finally, when there is a crash in the commodity price, there is no safeguard present for the farmers to help them recover their uh, production cost or even avert distress. The third and the final challenge the author notes is the absence of institutional credit or reduced institutional credit. The government does plan to increase it from the present uh, 10 lakh crore to 11 lakh crore. However, only with improved institutional credit, the farmers will be able to augment investment and will increase their purchasing power so that they are able to adopt better technologies and better practices in farming. Finally, the author underlines certain missing points present in the budget. It has to be understood that close to 52% of the net sown area is still unirrigated. And this fact has not received due attention in the current budget. Even though there are irrigation schemes which has been presented by the government of India, a revamped or an augmented irrigation system, it is not really presented or analyzed in this year's budget. Another key component uh, that's missing in the budget is the investment in agricultural research and development. So only when there is improved investments in agricultural research, there is going to be improvement in the productivity of the farmers. So only with increased productivity, they will have increased income. So unless there is substantial amount of investments which is taking place in agricultural research, the farmers productivity is not going to increase very much. Finally, it says that Rather than enticing farmers with compensation and increased budgetary outlays, the government should be assuring doable action plans that rescue them from price or crop failure. <laughs>